Hey, do you know that the game is uh, sunsetting? That the game is closing down? Oh, what? Wait, what? September 27th, the game but The server ends. shut down? The server shut down. I'm just really baffled this guy is like... Will they make a solo version of it? He, he wants to know if they'll make a solo <laughs> version of it. That, 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 that's I just found it. It's not even when you go to game. Oh, he said he just found it. <laughs> I feel like we just broke this guy's heart. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry, man. There is a form of multimedia entertainment beyond that which is good. These games are as vast in number as they are terrible. They dwell in the dark recesses of history, unearthed from the pits of the bargain bin. These are the games of horror. This is Garbage Game Night. Welcome to Garbage Game Night, where we like raccoons, we, we love trash. Sometimes the games are obviously trash, poor selling, panned by everyone. Other times, like tonight, we're looking at games because they're being thrown out. It is yet another live service game that's being sunset. We'll do a shallow dive into this game. And, uh, you know, the powers that be said this game wasn't good enough, but we're going to try and have some fun with it anyway. Of course, I'm going to need some help, so I've got an expert team of trash connoisseurs here. I had Frank's name on the list. He's taking care of his family, so Frank couldn't make it. But we have Tom. How are you doing tonight, Tom? Hello. Hello. I, I'm, doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, I, I dabbled in, in the game tonight. I'm feeling, mm -hmm. feel, feeling sharp. Okay, all right, and Bob, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. You know, it's a Monday night, a little rainy here, but it's it's nice. Yeah, you might hear some rain on Bob's tin roof. Um, he lives in a, oh, yeah. a shack nice. that he constructed himself out in the Everglades. So, um, yeah. hey, you know, in this economy, <laughs> it's still nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Tin's expensive in this economy. Property value is still going up. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, we're shaking up the podcast structure a little bit. I'll talk about it at the end if you're interested about some format changes you might notice, but we're not going to delay us looking at the game. So tonight uh, we're playing The Cycle Frontier by Jaeger Development, a game that when it was released just 13 months ago in June of 2022 was the most wishlisted game on Steam. And here we are 13 months later doing an episode on it because the servers are shutting down. What happened and can it still be enjoyed? Well, it's going to shut down in September. So, um, you know, if you can enjoy it, not for very long. But first, what is the Cycle Frontier? Very briefly, it's an extraction shooter, sometimes called a looter shooter. And I can tell you what it is very concisely. But instead, uh, Bob, why don't you give it a shot? Explain to me what an extraction shooter is. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I didn't preface at all, but you know what? I'm going to go for it. So yeah, I'm assuming it. it's your safe havens, and then you're out in the real world uh -huh. on missions where it's kind of like PvP and anything kind of goes... Yeah. And if you die, you lose your stuff. But if you interactive and dangerous out there. Yeah. No, so it's pretty like good. Rust and those things. All right. Yeah. Anything else, Tom? No, I think I, yeah, a I, ton I, of extraction shooters. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might have been the first extraction shooter I ever played. Yeah. And um, honestly, uh, without getting into it too much, I really I really liked it. I, there is something very scary and tense about like running around and everybody's trying to kill you, especially when you're like me and you're not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Extraction shooters are, um, they're kind of a, a fairly new genre. Most people think of Escape from Tarkov as being the first and probably most popular extraction shooter. And they only started up in 2017. The idea is that you have a home base, kind of a safe hub, you gear up, you can buy, sell and stuff, go, and then go into a raid, which is uh, you know a hostile environment. You put everything you have on the line, everything that you're wearing on the line. And you're usually fighting AI or other players, stuffing your backpack as full as much stuff as you can, and then act, extract to get back out alive. The stakes are high. Um, like, maybe this is a really good weapon that you have. It's gotten you through a whole bunch of raids. Um, but someone could take it from you at any moment. You could lose the shirt on your back. and Or you could make it out of there like a king. Maybe you managed to kill another player, and they've got stuff in their backpack you've never even seen before. And you just want to make it back out alive, but you hear footsteps. Do you fight? Did they hear you? It's the, you know, that's the typical extraction shooter experience. It's, it's loot and shooting, and I think it's the, I think it's the next logical step after Battle Royales, I think. Um, it's, a, it's the same, similar style gameplay, but with more RPG elements, higher stakes. So um, before we actually jump into the game, we're going to hear from some of the critics and user reviews to set us up to kind of tease your palates. Uh, this game has a 59 on Metacritic of the of the 59 vintage, which is pretty standard fare for us. Uh, but we're going to hear from some of the critics. So I'm sending these around. Tom, what do you have there? From Game Grin, a 65, a 65, which is a little, a little high for us. Mostly flash with very little substance. The incredible graphics and overall design draw you in, but there's not much to keep you there. All right, Bob, what does PC Gamer have to say? PC Gamer gave it a 55, right down the middle. The Cycle Frontier is a well-polished but undone by tedium and lack of imagination. Yeah, 
And NME yeah. says, There's a great game somewhere inside the cycle, and lush world design, clever environmental layout, and solid gun feel all point towards it. Unfortunately, it's all rendered into tedious, cynical nonsense by a... Cynical? I thought they would have said cyclical. Cynical. Cynical nonsense mm. by a mobile game style approach to progression and monetization and a thin, repetitive core loop. They gave it a 40. And uh, from a couple players on Steam. Tom, what do you have there? J Jazz Torrance. Sure. Tor <laughs> Jazz Torrance. He says, thanks, cheaters. A good game closing soon. Recommended. <laughs> Still a recommending of, it. <laughs> there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of mixed messaging. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious. It seems that he's blaming cheaters for it being the reason closing down. I, I'm assuming you're going to have a take on that. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about the cheater issue with uh, the cycle. Um, also, in the last comment, whenever someone talks about, like, good gun feel, that just seems like a weird comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I really right? like the gun feel. <laughs> You're like, you're holding a mouse. Like, what is that? <laughs> Thumper on Steam said, casual sci-fi Tarkov recommended. All right, Rory on Steam says, don't expect to have fun if you miss the first two weeks of the wipe. You missed the window to get your kinetic arbiter and right armor. The streamers and unemployed grinders will beat you to it. They're covering in the beginning. The wipe is extremely hard. Don't waste your time. Clean your room or something. Not recommended. Mm, yeah, we'll touch on what he's talking about as well. And one more from uh, someone you may have heard of, <laughs> Tom. Joe Biden. Yeah, on Steam. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Says, uh, the cheating problem is nothing like what it was before. The game is much better now. And for anyone checking the reviews... The game went through major updates since its launch and is far better now. It is a game that will get the adrenaline pumping, especially when getting out of a raid with a bag filled with high tier loot. Recommended. There you go. Thanks, Joe. Um, wow, Joe. That's probably the most complicated uh, thing Joe said in a while. <laughs> Um, all right, well, we're just going to sink our grubby little paws into it. You guys can start playing, um, and I've got some uh, some little rules and objectives here for you. So um, well, we normally try and take in a game, uh, most of the feel, the game feel of it, if you will, <laughs> the, um, the feel and the plot of a game when we do it Love on Love that GGM. game feel. <laughs> that game feel. Uh, for the cycle, it's, it's much more of like a sandbox experience. There is progression and like bigger events that you can unlock in the end game, but if you imagine trying to show someone like Fortnite or, or Call of Duty, something like that, like you, you see a game or two of it, you're going to get the feel of the general gist of what the game is. So uh, we're, we're just going to watch some of it um, on stream right now. That's just some recorded footage that uh, of me, and I'm going to jump over to those guys playing um, soon. Yeah, in, in the cycle, you're going to run around on the planet with your gear. You're going to run into other players, usually shoot on sight, unless you can like yell in proxy chat, wait, 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 friendly. We could like all squat up and get into fights, but tonight we're worried about having fun. So I've got a couple activities for us to do where you guys will earn points. And you know, in these dark, dark times of, of sunsetting in the world of the cycle frontier, we need friends. So while you're down there on the planet of Fortuna 3, I want you to make friends. Each person that you make friends with in the game, which is completely subjective and up to me, is 100 points. So you're wow. going to use proxy chat and uh, yeah, try to make some friends down there. Um, add on bonus here. If you can get them to say the word raccoon without saying the word raccoon, scavenger, mask, trash, black or brown. Really, the harder you make it on yourself to get them to say raccoon, I'll just give you points for that. But it's 500 points for saying the word raccoon. You can can get... you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you put can you put that? No. Rule. Can you send that nope. to me? And <laughs> no, nope. no, nope. you're gonna have to do the best you can. <laughs> I'm oh, not gonna oh, repeat the words. <laughs> you so you have to avoid. Them? Nope. Nope. You have to this avoid. This is like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> when they go, they're like, "Okay, this is the address. Go to forty-eight two zero." Tom, I just expect I like, you to remember it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> okay, hey, you're just gonna I... be super careful. Here's another one for you. If you can meet a stranger and get them to visit twitchtv cast and say, I'm here because of Tom, or Bob. Uh, 500 points for that, all right? Holy shit, okay. Yeah. And finally, if you can literally stab them in the back, <laughs> take out your <laughs> melee and hit them with it, you'll get 1,000 points. I don't care if you live or die after, that's something you're gonna have to live with. So you have to make <laughs> the friend and then stab them in the back for 1,000 oh, points, all right? <laughs> but we have to make the friend first? Oh, you have to make the friend first. Yeah, you can't just uh, like you can't surprise like on someone. someone and melee them, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> So I should be able to hear you um, if you start you know, like yelling in game, um, so, and I'll jump over to your screen if you do. 
in terms of what we wear, is that just up to us? Like what, so, what? yeah, there is one more one more thing at the very end. You know, if you're not as adept at the social interactions in the cycle, um, this game does have a cosmetic store deeply discounted right now. I think you guys have looked at it because they're sunsetting the game. Um, we'll do a fashion show at the end. Best looking prospector mm. by my subjective um, judgment only another 500 <laughs> points there. Hold on. I meant like um, armor and stuff like that. Oh, you can do whatever you want. But I mean, yeah, you can give the put the best gear you have on. But, you know, it won't really matter too much for making friends. I will it say, might cool. What's it the helps point? save a couple bullets, though. It could, we... yeah. It make, if you're yelling friendly, 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 then yeah, it could save you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While they are getting into their games and trying to meet some friends, I'll tell you some more about the cycle. Uh, I'll turn the audio up just a little bit so we can hear. How, how, does, how does the insurance work again? It's I like... wouldn't worry about it. You can use your Aurum. Um, essentially, right. insurance in these games works that it, you'll put some of the premium currency down, um, and if someone doesn't take it out of the raid, then you get the item back. Or if they do take it out, you get some compensation with money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just it's just a way to make sure that it doesn't completely disappear on you. All right, so as they're getting into the games and trying to meet friends, I'll tell you a little bit more about the cycle. What is or what was the game? Uh, it is a sci-fi themed extraction shooter. It is PvPVE, which is a term that's silly and just getting more and more around out there in game development but it means you know your first players and ai at the same time so you have a hub base where you keep all your gear you invest loot into improving your hideout which in turn will help you in minor ways like increasing your inventory space even invest in the ability like to generate the premium currency in the game is um you can visit vendors and factions in the hub to buy and sell gear they each have their own quests and campaigns they'll want you to like go down to the planet and like collect something or leave this thing here in a box, do it and do a dead drop kind of thing. Um, there are little AI beasties running around on the planet. Uh, maybe you want their loot or maybe you can try and skirt around them because you don't want to fight them or outrun them. Um, and you're looting an abandoned planet. The lore is that this was a resource rich planet that was being mined. And as the intro trailer says, the planet turned on us. Uh, bad storms made everyone evac. So you're running through abandoned facilities, filling up your backpack. You might hear distant gunshots and, you know, maybe you want PvP, so you'd follow those gunshots. Uh, maybe someone heard you making a lot of noise, so they ambush you and it'll scare you shitless, because it will. It, it does, to me, constantly. But you want to fill your backpack up with as much stuff as you dare and then run to one of the extract areas, call in a ship and get out alive. You'll end up back at the hub, you know, turn in quest items, improve your kit, and then keep going. And if you die down there on the planet, you lose everything you have, and uh, that person gets to you know, pick from your armor, weapons, quest items from your foamy body. Uh, when you die in this game, you turn into a big foamy thing. Um, you know, a couple deaths in a row, you're going to start running out of gear entirely. And yeah, things can get pretty desperate. Make me feel like you're making no progress. The lows are low, but the highs are real high. Um, there's a lot to cover about the maps, the monsters, the quests, and there's even dungeon a dungeon at the end of the game. Um, there's some like in-game events where you can trigger like a massive drill coming down from the sky and everyone on the map will see it and go fight at it. There's some really cool stuff about the game where you won't be able to get into all of it. See, Tom is very carefully approaching. Uh, this is what the, the science or the vaccine labs area in bright sands. Tom's found some little, some little creepy guys, striders. He's going to try and knife them. You have like a shiv? Do you have a yeah. box cutter? <laughs> yeah, the cosmetic he's picked for his uh, his knife is a box cutter. Um, <laughs> okay, I gotta crouch to get to this guy. <laughs> yeah, the little ledge there. Well, well, I don't need this stuff, so... Alright, uh, quick disclosure, very often with GG, and I'm talking about a game that I'm not really an expert in. Like, I did research for it uh, for a week or two. I write a whole bunch of notes. There's like 10 pages of notes for any game that I do. I, I, try, I try my best to give a knowledgeable summary of. I try to do right by our fans because there's there's a dozen of them, you know? But The Cycle Frontier is an outlier. I, I've been playing this game since closed alphas and including the hours in those, I have a couple hundred hours in this game. Um, I've made a, I made a beginner's tips for, for playing The Cycle video about um, the game and I was invited to their partner program where I had exclusive drops on this channel. I did a 24 hour stream on it while I had those drops. A couple thousand people were watching the channel. I made like a cool hundred bucks just from ad revenue. So like I, I have way more experience with this game than almost any other game we've done, I think. Um, that being said, I know enough to know that I don't know everything about this game. I was never an end game player in the cycle. There are people... That's a, that's a good way to show someone that you're there on peaceful terms is to look down your I'm, scope. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of using it like a... Like binoculars. Funny enough, you do have binoculars. <laughs> oh, 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 <crap. laughs> 
Uh, there are people who have left reviews for this game that are like, eh, it's pretty good. And you can see that they have like 900 hours in the game. This is, this is a game that has a l like Warzone or, F or Fortnite kind of games. They have a lot of replayability. Um, I, well, like I'm saying, I'm not one of those, so I may mess up some details, but, um, I watched someone do like a, like, why did the cycle close kind of, kind of video. And they got so many basic facts about the game wrong that I was like, all right, everyone's just out here faking it. I can make a video too. <laughs> Oh, oh, hey, friend, I just made a friend. friend. I hear somebody. Someone? Oh my gosh. You're, you Bob's like made a everywhere. friend. Are you above me? Oh my Everybody. gosh. What's going on? I'm so scared. Oh, two, two interactions at once. Oh no. Uh oh, Bob's no? found someone without proxy chat. I just got binoculars out to, uh, to oh, find. You proxy chat? Nah, oh, dang it. Well, if you. Buddy. I think you're up. I think... Well, try and make friends regardless, okay. Bob. Okay, okay. How's your night going? <laughs> hello? hello? Oh, hello. talking through jumping. Love that. Hello? Hey! Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going, buddy? I'm, uh... Oh, yeah. A little greeting. A little crouch greeting. <laughs> How you doing, man? Doing good? You know, I didn't expect this, because this game has, uh... Do you have, uh... Do you have chat at all? Yes? Do you want to... It's so rare to run into someone do that right, doesn't have a mic. Would you want to nod yes if you want to be friends? Look at his gear. Holy shit. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. It, it's just nod, cosmetics. Nod yes if you want to be buddies. Okay. Oh, there you go. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. Oh, there you go. How's it going, man? Trying to hunt creatures inside the camp is right. Nice. I I can help you. I am an ambassador from um, from GGN from Garbage Game Night. <laughs> it's actually running on it's running on Twitch right now. You are you're famous to all two of our uh, viewers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty <laughs> cool. What do you, what do you say? Do you think we're uh, we're officially buddies, you and I? Yeah. Wow. Nice. There it is. Nice. Congratulations. Very cool. very, 100 very points cool. on the board. <laughs> um, if you want, if you actually go on to twitch.tv slash uh, forward slash uh, GGN cast, that is where it's at. And you'd be able to see that you're famous right now. I can follow you for a bit if you want to, um, you know, if you're looking for we're, stuff, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of tag We're doing a podcast about the closing of the cycle and uh, the two people that I'm, I'm doing it with here. I'm trying to convince no, them to. <laughs> I'm trying to convince them to make friends with people, and then they have some bonus Coward. things they can do. If they can get them to say the word <laughs> raccoon, they right get now. extra I can points. Just stab him right in the back, right now. I can do it. <laughs> and they get a thousand points if they make a friend, and then they stab him in the back. Well, what was that, bud? Oh, uh, yeah, I've, I've got Ooh. stuff for you. Um, Love to see that helping a friend out. Love how to see it. Do, how do I press tab to open to your you. inventory? Okay, I'm being told now. Uh, tab drag and it off. then drag it off and just drop it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but he's too much of a coward to do it, Healy Wheelies. <laughs> I can still do it. <laughs> you can do it. The rule is you can't give them forewarning. <laughs> oh, there's somebody else. Let's go find them and make friends with them and, you know, maybe... Well, that's a lot of gunfire. Maybe stab them in the back, because we can only be friends with one person. <laughs> uh, what happened with you? you? Did you find somebody? I did. He didn't have a mic and he just ran away. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. I, I think I'll you did make... You, you made a pretty good effort at making friends, though, so I'll, I'll give you 25 points for that. Um, hey, he stopped shooting me, so that's a, that's a plus. Oh, yeah, he stopped shooting you? Nice. Oh, tell you what, 50. But I will say, I did... Uh, not restock ammo for coming here and i'm out and now Ooh, being chased. it's an important part of uh, extraction shooters uh, th there was someone who raided us with 27 people so i was i was chatting them up um to explaining what the heck we're doing here and why you're threatening to stab someone in the back <laughs> nice i'm pretty sure i've seen you stream before um whenever whenever i played uh this guy oh the guy who raided us not the guy you're talking to um mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've seen you stream before i think i might have run into you whenever i played um I'd I'd always check to see if the person I you know encountered was streaming, and I feel like I've I've jumped into your stream before. Yeah. Now, real quick, do we get bonus points if we get shot nice. by lightning yeah. and killed? <laughs> no, you get no bonus Ask points at all friend. for that for a, for a friend. Okay. 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 I'm gonna jump over to Bob. See if he. Oh, he. It's already happened. Okay, that's what happened to Bob. <laughs> it could have been anyone. All right. I panned over to your screen and uh, 
you're a bit of a foamy mess I there. I was being chased. I was struck <laughs> by lightning. I'm like, oh, well, that's that's a way to go. Were you in the drop program too, last Saiyan Prince? Saiyan, Saiyan. I'm sorry, Saiyan Prince. Yeah, I'm. I think that's probably where I remember seeing you before. I think I remember because I, yeah, I checked out the entire list. And I remember hey, seeing. Hey, Chris, you how do I find out what his like name is and stuff? <clears throat> is there a way to uh, check a gamer tag while you're in game? Oh, I, don't I know meant, there like, is. It, does it just like have a thing over? Like, there's no indication of. At the very end, it'll show you everyone you were within proximity of, or you took damage from. Um, so you can see their like their in-game tag. Um, at that Got point. It. Oh, he's out of ammo. This guy seems really interested in like playing the game, like leveling up the objectives and stuff. Ask him if he like his thoughts on the game closing. Ask, does he ask know him his thoughts on what? Like, does he know the game's sunsetting? Oh. Hey, do you know that the game is uh, sunsetting? That the game is closing down? Oh, what? Wait, what? Yeah, he said, yeah, the game is... I can hear it's him. Gonna, like, it's going to end, like, forever. In September 27th. Se September tw September 27th, the game... With the server shut down. The server shut down. I'm just really baffled this guy is like... Will they make a solo version of it? He, he wants to know if they'll make a solo <laughs> version of it. They haven't announced that they will, uh, no. They, they have not announced that they will. Sorry, the, the, our, our guy running the uh, podcast, he's feeding me information because I'm <laughs> stupid. That, that, that... Found it. This might be my new go -to game. Oh, he said he <laughs> just found it and it was going to be his go to game. Oh, oh, that really man, sucks. That's, that's a bummer. Yeah, in September 27th is when uh, when the server shut down. <laughs> I feel like we just broke this guy's heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, man. That's actually why we went uh, went on here. Is um, it's slowly going to go into the garbage can and that's where uh, that's where we live. <laughs> yeah, he's still processing I, it. Hey, what else? What else? Uh, what else lives in in that? You know. Place I can't quite hear Oh, just I was just. He's trying to get him to say the word raccoon, and that's another objective. In, in filth. You know what? What would be a good animal for that? I'm trying to think. You do not actually know. You know what, what, is there any when you like go to like toss your things out that sometimes they're out there? You know. And he's not allowed to Cute. say the word Cute. raccoon like or. Bandit. I think he can say the word bandit. Not all. Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where do you live? I do not quite know. You don't. Oh, you don't know where you live. He is allowed to. He is allowed to say the word bandit. I think he thinks. So. Now he thinks you're weird. All right, I, I can't like hear Tom's guy, but is he? Is he of age? <laughs> no, he's. he's Where? How old is this person? Oh, no, he no, sounds. Uh, he sounds like an adult. Ask him his age. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then where he lives? Yeah. What's going on over there? Where you live? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me where How you live. <laughs> What's that? Ooh, flawed velticide. Gifts? Come on! I was just gonna stab him just now. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has found a okay. game that he loves, and because he's giving you his back, Tom. <laughs> Oh no, Tom! With the box cutter! <laughs> Just say the animal. <laughs> oh! He did it! He did okay, it! Okay, okay. Alright, alright, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. <laughs> Goodbye, have a good night. Have a good night, man. Alright, another 500 points on the board for Tom. Wow. <laughs> I like I threatened him with the box cutter <laughs> while he held like a gun to my face. <laughs> People in chat were suggesting some other things. Uh, so from now on, you cannot, you also cannot say the furry guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, or you can't say Trash Panda. Those things are off the table. Oh my! Someone hello? just threw a grenade towards you. Hello, 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 hello. Oh my goodness! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, the game is sunsetting. We're just here to make friends. I'm gonna pull out my binoculars. How do you do that? How do you pull up binoculars? We don't have to do this. It's just a flashlight I'm holding. Ow. <laughs> Hold on, I'm holding binoculars. You don't have to go. <laughs> All right, we'll give this guy a shout out. Who was your friend? There we go, Jokerson. Thanks for being a friend, Jokerson.
So while they reset, I'll jump over to Bob here, see what Bob's getting into. He's over at the science labs. So quick zoom out of the timeline of this game. Alpha tests for the cycle started in late 2021, going into early 2022. There were two beta tests that lasted for a couple weeks each early in early 2022. Um, these were extremely popular, highly watched on streams, like very anticipated. Like I said, it was the top wishlisted game on Steam for a while. The main game launched in June of 2022. Three months later, season two dropped in, that was September of 23. Six months after that, end of March 23, season three launched. Three months after that, here we are. It was June 2023, they announced sunsetting. So 12 months from launch to sunset announcement. I'm gonna go over some stats really fast. The game peaked at almost 41,000 players. Oh, quick note, these stats are just from Steam. Um, this game's also on Epic Game Store. Those stats aren't included. So the game peaked at almost 41,000 players at once on launch. That was in June of 2022. It dropped pretty dramatically over that first season, which, you know, to be expected, it was a new launch. But at the same time, games with seasons like this, there's an ebb and flow to it. It dropped down to 4,000 concurrent players for a while. That may sound low, but 4,000 concurrent players, you're still in the top 150 games on Steam. Then for season two, again, it peaked at 8,000. Season three, which we're going to get into some more of what happened with season three, but it got 10,000 concurrent players at once. And that was only four months ago at 10,000 players. Pretty good. Um, but since their sunset announcement, for the first time, they've been dropping under 1,000 pretty regularly. Um, this according to steamdatabase.info or steamdb.info. But again, this game did very well for a period and arguably was not that low until they announced it was shutting down. Estimated Steam downloads range from 2 million to 4 million. I should clarify again that this is free to play. So using these stats, I compared it to a couple of the GGN games and their numbers. The cycle, when they decided to sunset, was averaging 3,000 players, right? So 3,000 players playing the cycle. Compared to Knockout City, another game that we've done, uh, aside from its launch and when it went free to play, it seemed to, again, this is another game that was on Epic Game Store. I'm just looking at Steam stats. But Knockout City was only averaging about 250 players over two years, which is pretty wild, um, you know, there's a fraction of what this game was getting, and that game was kept alive for two years. Um, Spellbreak, when it was announced to be Sunsetting, had 200 active players. America's Army, Proving Ground, another game we've done, had 300 at uh, Sunset. Yeah, so the peak viewer count for the cycle was 99,000 viewers in on... Uh, uh, Hyperscape and Rumbleverse, two other games that we've done in the sunset. We've done a lot of them now. Uh, there's no charts for those, so I can't really compare those. But my point is, of any game that we've done that's been sunset, this has by far had the most active player base. Of course, there's lots of things that go into the decision. What kind of servers are they paying for? What's the revenue model? Maybe Knockout City was way better with cosmetic sales, for example. Maybe Rumbleverse was banking on selling battle passes. Um, you know, each case is unique. But it is strange to see a game that is as highly played as this getting sunset. Last Saiyan Prince who rated us, he has 6,000 hours in this game. Hello. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm interested in any of your insight, brain. too, um, if you have anything else in here. I was just going to say some uh, some things that really set the game apart um, from other extraction shooters. I have or things a riddle. That I... I have a riddle. I have a riddle. Let's see what happens and with you, Tom here. If you know the answer to the riddle, I will give you all my stuff. If you can tell me what critter is best suited to wear a mask and be a thief. I think that was on the ban list. I will give you all my stuff. If you can tell me what animal... Mask whoa, was whoa, on the ban whoa. list. He's not getting oh, all the points. Oh, was, was it? Was it? Dang it. Uh, Do we're I all, get points if he, if he still says it? We're all East Sorry, Coast. I'm, well, I'm, we're talking, yeah, you'll get talking some. to my buddies online. If you, uh, if you want, are you a Twitch guy? Shake your head up and down if you watch Twitch. <clears throat> oh, that's no. Oh. That's a big, whole full body no. This guy well, hates how Twitch. About this? Uh, up and down if you want to be friends. Is that is that a nod? Give me a big, give me a big <laughs> up down, up down if we're if we're friends. Oh, oh right. there it is. All right, that sounds good, man. I will uh, I will follow you, and uh, oh sorry, I will follow you and I will uh, help you kill things. You know. Okay. Yep. All right, do I do I do it? Do it. He can't even fully properly talk, you know. So he feels like a good person to literally stab in the back. <laughs> oh, I feel a little dirty about that. <laughs> uh, Not only sorry. did you stab him in the back. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Wow. 
Not only did you stab him in the back, you killed him afterwards. Healy Wheelie in chat just suggested that he... You can tell him to hold Alt to get to... Is that your emote wheel? I forget. What what happens when you hold Alt in this game? Yeah, it's an emote wheel. Okay, it's your emote wheel. <laughs> That'd be a little easier for him to communicate. Your comms wheel. Oh, oh yeah, you, you can say, like, you have some preset commands, right? I forgot about that. Tom, hold down Alt real fast. Um... Yeah, you're looting green gear. <laughs> alt? Oh, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of ways they can communicate with you. <laughs> oh, so what do I do? Oh, I wave and stuff. How much of that terrible betrayal? How many points did that get me? <sighs> that was a, was a brutal it was a betrayal, most foul. I, uh, yikes. Um, you made friends with him, I'll say. Um, and oh, then you nodded. stabbed him in the he back. Nodded. Yeah, you definitely, uh, I'll, I'll give you 400 points for that, I feel like. It wasn't, nice. you know, I'm, I'm giving it on the subjective. How how much betrayal did it feel like? It just felt dirty, if we're being honest. You know, no one no one felt good about <laughs> oh, that. Are you saying are you saying that you'll get more points if it's a more terrible betrayal? I I have to question my friendship with you. I think for the for more <laughs> points. That one was just like, yeah. I mean, he wasn't really talking. Okay. You you did All say right. let's go kill things together, and then you stabbed him in the back. <laughs> I was surprised I was able to get my shotgun up and kill him fast enough. Yeah, you switched really quick. That was that was good for someone who's got, you know, an hour in the game. Last say in Prince, who's in chat, who has 6,000 6, hours in the game. Yeah, he's saying that he he loves the proxy chat, the tension, um, and kind of making the fun for himself like like we're doing, I guess. Right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm he's been involved since the uh, closed alpha testing. All right, yeah, some things that kind of kept me coming back that kind of set the game apart. The, the storms in this game, I mentioned really briefly, the, the, the name of the cycle is about the storm cycles. Every 30 minutes or so, there's a five minute storm that happens. You get a warning, it's coming. Most people try to get extracted before it actually hits. It'll get pitch black, there's a lightning storm, it'll hit you, do lots of damage. Bob found out um, the AI, some of the AI will, uh, Creatures will get supercharged and you can wait it out inside. You know, you can find a place that's good to loot while the storm's going on. Or once you get used to the, you know, mechanics of the game, you can pretty much just stay through it if you want to. Um, some other things, the hub, um, the space station that's above the planet, that's kind of like your hub, your safe spot. I really, I really like this, like the kind of the lore of the game. I like it as an aesthetic choice to an extraction shooter. There's got to be the safe place and like Tarkov. It's like, it's your hideout. Like, what does what does that mean? I like that there's like a space station above that's safe, and you drop down onto the planet uh, to do the PvP. I, I think the aesthetic of it is is a really good design. Um, also, when you drop in, most you know battle royales or any other extraction shooters that I'm aware of, um, you all start at the same time, not with the cycle. In, in this, it is an ongoing server that you're dropping into. While you're playing the game, you can see other drop pods come down. You can run at them if you want to, if you really want to get engaged in PvP. Of course, you'll know they won't have a lot of stuff in their backpack. But um, again, I think that's that's a really cool choice to have it an ongoing world. The loot resets, I've always felt like worked pretty good. That they respawn when you're far enough away, I think was the trigger. Um, I don't know, it all felt pretty natural to me see other unique things the extract in this game is pretty unique you have two designated pads um, that you can extract from once you get within range you call in the ship it'll land within a minute and then take off shortly that window of time is extremely dangerous it creates most of the tense moments you know they, they can see the ship coming in they want to ambush you you're trying to hold it off and just get out with all your stuff it, it creates some really great moments i've taken a lot of sniper shots um personally um as i've been trying to extract and taking shots at people as they're trying to do it I feel like the station, if the station was expanded, more like adding trading in a dual arena, it would have probably kept the game going. That's that's one of the things that stands out to me, Healy Wheelies, is that, like, from the beginning, I, in an extraction shooter like this, or any battle royale like PUBG, like, you get a gun and you're not sure how it's going to handle until you fire it, right? You need some time to learn, so it just seemed like a really obvious thing that like give us a shooting range to test the guns out. And like, it's right there in the hub. Just it, I, I, I can't wrap my head around why they wouldn't let you do that kind of thing. So yeah, like I loved seeing the expansions they made in season three um, to it. They weren't that much, but like even visually, like there were a bunch of changes um, to the hub. And uh, yeah, just seeing that, I was like, why couldn't this have come faster? Maybe it's because they were devoting all their resources to the, the cheater issue, but. And uh, finally, for some unique things, the, the events, which we're not going to get too deep into. We're just doing a surface level look at the game. But every so often, there's like meteor strikes that hit the planet. They, they drop some unique uh, minerals. And obviously, people are going to be drawn towards that if they're looking for those minerals. There's lots of locked rooms around the maps that require certain key cards that have limited usages on them, a higher value loot in there. 
there's some events I mentioned, like the laser drill that you can call in. <clears throat> it's like a giant planet drill that comes down onto the map and you gotta, you gotta sit it out for a little while to get the loot out of it. I feel like the AI in this game is pretty unique too. Most PVE games, um, you know, they're gonna be like humanoid. They're gonna be like, you know, scavengers or something that you're shooting. Um, in this game, we got some got some aliens that I think they're they're pretty cool. Little dino dudes and big dino dudes. There's some praying mantis dudes. Um, I don't know. I, I just like the aesthetic and the the creatures in this game. That being said, there could have been a whole bunch more of them, but uh, I, I do like the ones that are in the game. No, 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 no. It's Jeff. No, 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 no. You don't want to make friends with Jeff? You can make friends <laughs> with Jeff. <laughs> oh God. No, no, no. Get Jeff to say raccoon. <laughs> Oh man. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I actually saw the, um, oh God, I'm exposing my, uh, lack of knowledge here. The, uh, giant wasp thing. What was a Owler. Yeah. That's cool. That was a cool design. That's the kind of thing I wish, I wish they would have had like 10 different creatures like that. Right. And just have them spawn extremely rarely. I hate to, it's hard to talk about this game without talking about Tarkov, but you know, that, that's how the the raid bosses are in Tarkov. And it's a system that works. Like, it keeps people playing the game because they're hunting down rare loot, right? Yay, Tom did it. Oof, all right. Is Tom making a friend? I think you uh, I think you did the heavy lifting, but but we did it. Do you, uh, do you have chat? No, it doesn't no, have chat. No, you don't have wow. chat. Our well, friends who can't speak you, friends, you be, uh, yes, they you are. Be friends for a little while? Okay, is that a big yes? Okay, I guess that's that a yes. universal sign of friendship. <laughs> All right. That'd be great if it was the same guy you betrayed. Start <laughs> <laughs> and stabs you in the back. So, all right, what is, is other people in chat, Chris? Just tell them what they want me to do. <laughs> hey, you're entertaining us here, man. You gotta... <laughs> chat says they really want you to heal. <laughs> that's all they want. It's, he's to gonna, heal? yeah, you're still at half health, Tom, <laughs> and you've backed yourself into ah! a corner. <laughs> oh, god, no, uh, this I'm is dead. it for Tom. Wow, no. where was your friend when you needed him? <laughs> so, I mentioned this game has seasons, each of these were nearly complete resets, which makes sense for a closed beta game, right? And it may sound, sound odd if you're not used to extraction shooters, but you know, if you're playing a closed beta or early access game, like it makes sense, like well, the game launches and the game's gonna completely reset, you're gonna lose all your progress. It's happening with Baldur's Gate right now, for example. But a lot of these games, extraction shooters, it's a pretty typical experience to have what, what are usually called wipes. I can't say with all certainty, I'm pretty sure it was popularized by Escape from Tarkov. That game, which has been out since 2017, still technically in, I think they call it beta, maybe early access. So for, for the sake of development, and because they have a very vast in-game economy, like they have an auction house where they're pricing trends, they can get out of whack, and sometimes there's just too much high-value gear in the game because of changes they've made every nine months or so. Um, they're like, okay, we're resetting everything. Your entire account will wipe. And whether intentional or not, that became a big selling point for the game because when there is a wipe, there's a huge spike in the player base. Like, imagine a, a PvP game, like, you know, a, any PvP game that you guys would launch into, like, you know, Call of Duty or Warzone, something like that, where, you know, the more people play, the stronger they get. And why would you want to drop into that game when you know that there's going to be a complete reset for everyone happening in a couple weeks, right? So, you know, wipes make sense that when they do them, there's going to be a huge spike in the player base. And, you know, it's exciting starting from the bottom and trying to like race up to the top. You're, when you're on the bottom, you know, everyone's on your level too. It's just like just the skills, right? So as someone who watches, has watched a lot of Tarkov, like the, the rags to riches runs that happen at the beginning of wipe are really exciting too. But when you're watching someone who kind of has it all, you know, yeah, you, you got to kind of make the fun out of that, like like we were saying earlier. The way the cycle frontier incorporates this, um, I think pretty smoothly is calling them seasons, setting up a system where depending on how far along your uh, your character is getting with the cosmetics and the battle pass, you're getting some rewards that carry on to the next season. And um, correct me if I'm wrong with that, Sayon, I'm pretty sure, Sayon, I'm pretty sure that, that works that way or anyone else remembers. Um, but each season, it felt like they had a pretty clear theme with it too. And I don't know, I, I liked their general design with the seasons. I thought they, they handled it well. It wasn't just like, our game's fucked up, we're going to reset. <laughs> Went in with a pretty clear intention of wipes happening. Full wipe with each season. Yeah, what was, there was, was it like cosmetics? I guess it was cosmetics that you could unlock for that season that would carry over. That's That was the only carryover. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking there was something like you got to a certain 
uh, insurance tokens, Aurum and Cos. Oh, so Aurum court carried over too. That makes sense because that's the premium currency. Yeah. I had an idea. I brought audio decoys with me because maybe they will attract people. Or you could just fire your real gun, but yeah. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a gun? <laughs> That's what the, yeah, it sounds like a bunch of um, explosions and gunfire. All right, uh, other extraction shooters. I've mentioned Escape from Tarkov a couple times. People who play Tarkov, whenever you ask someone who plays Tarkov about it, they usually start by telling you that they hate it. Um, yeah, they sink like hundreds and hundreds of hours into it. There's there's few games with as much detail as Tarkov. There's an estimated to be about 2,000 lootable items. There's over 100 guns, all of them like differently moddable. You can, there's so many different attachment slots. Like you can put four laser scopes on a gun underneath, above, on the sides. But each one has to have like the right mount to attach the attachment to. And if you don't set your scope right, you'll be like looking at the back of a flashlight you put on your gun. There's more than 25 ammo sizes. Each of them have variants. Like you want to run an SKS weapon? Well, you're going to need Hello, a 762-39. Oh. And of course, there's different variants of that. There's the AP, BP, PS, US, T45M, the HP. So um, just a ridiculous amount of, of depth that game. It, like just knowing how to play the game seems like a full-time job and some people do. Yeah, and that's that's definitely a big difference with the cycle. Um, Healy Wheelie in chat says that love the simplicity of it. Yeah, there's most guns, you know, there's a couple that don't have any attachment slots, but or at least one. But yeah, that they, they have a, a scope slot, a handle slot, and each one does like a very clearly defined change that it'll reduce your recoil. And yeah, it's I, I don't want to simplify the cycle to say it's like a, a light version of Tarkov, but Tarkov is a, a does a lot of cool things, and this makes it so accessible, um, that that style of game. Aside from like the aesthetic, i much rather be in like a sci-fi space setting than the Balkan states. <laughs> to finish up on Tarkov, the gameplay is very similar to what we're experiencing. You gear up your hideout as, you know, as thin or thick as you want to go into the raid. All players in Tarkov start at the same time. Um, a twist in Tarkov's gameplay is you can be a scavenger. A scavenger or, or scav is a very poorly equipped AI that's running around the map. So you're usually killing a lot of them when you play the game, but you can spawn in as one of them. Um, so, you know, you've got like a rusty gun that it's not very reliable. Um, you start in the, ra the raid later. You're hoping to scoop up all the leftovers and get out. Very popular at any moment. There's like 20,000 people watching it on Twitch. As I mentioned, there's, uh, it's been in early access for six years. It's developed by Russian team Battlestate Games. They wipe every nine or so months. And uh, I was looking at the end game for Tarkov. That's something that keeps the hardcore people coming back. But the uh, their quest chains are so long that um, in the last wipe, there was a duo who shared one account to play it nonstop for about 17 days to hit um, what is generally accepted as the end game, which is the last um, pouch, the safe pouch in the game. It's called the Kappa pouch. Oh, Bob has found the Howler. I don't know if Tom, you have the Twitch stream up, but Bob's looking I at do, the Howler. I do. Oh my gosh, that thing yeah. is huge. It's it's a cool design. It shoots like these spikes at you. When you get close enough to them, the spikes explode. This is where I also is saw the Howler. So I guess come with uh, this BS gun. You know, depending on your performance, Bob, I might give you some points. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, he's fighting the Howler with the scrapper. <laughs> I've got a question. <laughs> if anyone can answer my question, then I'll give them my stuff. I suppose they could also just murder me for my stuff. It's got like a machine gun of stingers. Bob went down. Coming. He was brave though. 50 points on the board for Bob for his bravery. <laughs> Next extraction shooter game I want to talk about. Ooh, Hunt Showdown. This is Swamp Tarkov. I really like Hunt Showdown. It's been around since 2019. It's had an just continually increasing player count. I was really surprised by this. It's doing really well. Like you look at it, it's like a Steam player count. It's just like a continual um climb up uh good halloween vibes it's like witchcraft in the 1900s in the bayou that's that's the kind of aesthetic the game's going for the gameplay loop is that you, you start a raid with up to two teammates so three player teams there's a few other teams on the map as well your goal is to hunt down like these demon bosses kill them and escape with their bounty um, there isn't much emphasis on lootable items in the hunt. Um, it's more based about your character gaining skills and unlocking more guns for your character. And then when you get them far enough, if they don't die, um, then you retire your character for some more um, like long-lasting account effects. Um, so a different spin on Extraction Shooter. It's a very fun game, though. Next, Extraction Shooter, Marauders. This is Space Pirate Tarkov. It is an early access. It opened up last year. It's getting. It, it was getting pretty good reviews until recently. Some... Some people seem to think it's catering to the hardcore base too much and making the game less accessible. One note here, all these games get a ton of hype and people 
like really want these games to be good when new extraction shooters come out. People just can't wait for a good extraction shooter to happen. The cycle included, because like there's a big audience for this genre, but people just hate Tarkov, so they, they can't they, people can't wait for it to be replaced. All right, next extraction shooter. <laughs> Call of Duty, registered trademark, Warzone trademark, 2.0 DMZ season three is now live. That's like an MCU movie, how much backstory you need to understand what that is. But yeah, Warzone, you know, the most recent Call of Duty, it has a mode called DMZ. It's, uh, it's can charitably call, be called like Tarkov, light, 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 light. It's Call of Duty arcade shooter approach to an extraction shooter. It's, it's got its problems. It's, you know, some toxic Call of Duty community in there, but a lot of people are enjoying it. You fill your backpack up with stuff. You know, they have probably have like 60 different items. To fulfill quests you run around and have to do different like dead drops and stuff but you can carry your uh a couple guns i guess you can carry your whole kit or maybe it's just the gun no it's your whole kit from from game to game in that dmz you call dmz low tension extraction shooter yeah right i like it if if there was a little less like there's some people who just like seem to sweat in it like just focusing on the extraction camping but otherwise like yeah i, I like it it's a lot um you don't have these moments where I find myself just hiding in a bush. Like, I think I heard a footstep. <laughs> all right, next extraction Ow. shooter, uh, Scavengers. You may have heard of, I thought it was all right. Um, it's gone already. <laughs> as far as extraction shooters go, it was very close to being a battle royale. You start on the edge of a map, racing towards the center, mostly center, um, where the last ship on the planet's taking off, um, as would every other player and team. So nobody was friendly. It was always kill on sight. It was very possible to get to this big ship in the center with other enemies and like all make it out alive. Um, you'd usually be shooting at each other as the ship took off and the game would end. Um, there were like a couple, it was class based. Um, they'd have different abilities. You'd grab your kits as you raced in. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not messing this up. You would start off um, like PUBG completely empty um, and then grab a kit as you moved in, level up your character and get your abilities stronger as you made it towards the center. It lasted about a year and a half before they shut down. But I like that one. How many people at any given time are on a map? Great question. Does anyone know the answer to that? What is the cap for? I think it changes for map for map for sure. Um, I feel like Bright Sands might be like, I want to say in the teens for Bright Sands. 16 on Bright Sands? Yeah. Solo trusted will always be solo. Okay. Yeah, I remember when the game launched, it was randomized. You could, if you're solo, like, yeah, maybe you'll run into a team, which is pretty typical of the extraction shooter experience. Like, it's just a mixed bag of what you're going to get. Um, all maps match the squad size since start of season three. Mm. It's just fucked. It doesn't work, right? Uh, gear and MMR are taken into account when matching bright sands, but not on other maps. All right, a couple more extraction shooters. Uh, real quickly, upcoming ones. Arc Raiders is an upcoming extraction shooter. It's a third person so far. Uh, all they've got is really like highly rendered um, cutscenes uh, just to give the vibes of the no. game. Hard, hard to say what it's going to be like, but you know, it's got some oh attention because next extraction shooter, Dead Drop with one D in the middle, like Dia Drop or Dead Orp. I don't know. Um, it's an upcoming extraction shooter made by uh, streamer Dr. Disrespect and his team. Uh, it's been in the works for a while. Its selling point is that, again, that it's not Tarkov and that it's a vertical focused game. Um, so you're in like a sky rise building, teams above and below you. They've done a couple, like they've streamed the gameplay before, a bunch of, you know, big streamers have tried it before. Uh, my takeaway is that making a game from a team that hasn't made a game before seems tough. <laughs> Uh, the heart's in the right place. We'll see how it goes. But like, there's a there's a lot to overcome to make a make a, a game of high polish like this. Can't wait for Dark and Darker. Yeah, I I played a whole bunch of the play tests for Dark and Darker. Uh, it's got a it's a lot of room to grow, Dark and Darker. But I I really like it. I love the D and D vibes and and one last one, Marathon. What I've heard from watching people play Tarkov over and over again is I wish a big developer would do an extraction shooter like this um, because they complain Battle State just doesn't have the polish. Like th there's never been a, a, a AAA kind of team that's taken on extraction shooter. Hunt is different. Uh, I think they do a good job. They're not necessarily like a level of Bungie um, and DMZ isn't really trying to be the extraction shooter that I think people want. The cycle, I think, is as close as, as anything um, as like a, a new team taking on the genre. Well, at the end of May, Bungie, a little company you may have heard of, made Halo and Destiny, announced that they are their next game is Marathon, reusing an IP that they made three games for back in the mid-90s. We don't know too much about it yet. They, they released a trailer, very vibrant cyberpunk kind of style. You drop into what they call a persistent battlefield. I don't know if that means the same thing as like how the cycle servers work. 
Um, they seem to be talking about developing a world where the community has to like unlock zones and like you'll be memorialized, like this person figured out how to unlock the next zone that everyone's playing in. Um, so very unique things throughout the season quests. Uh, they made a point to mention they have a dedicated team in charge of fairness, so combating cheaters, and they will have a cross-platform launch. And with it being such a big developer, one way or another, you know, a Bungie game is going to make an impact. So um, with that being said, is it a coincidence that the cycle called it quits like weeks after they announced it? I don't know. I uh, can't say exactly what into, went into their decisions, but I was like, wow, an another huge extraction shooter. And then I heard the news that they were sunsetting this. So interesting timing. Marathon equals bright color DMZ. Yeah, low tension. Oh, so you think it's gonna be low tension, no out of, really? No out of raid inventory? Hello, hello. Is that like confirmed? Friend. Hey, I, uh, I come in peace. It's a simulation. If, uh... Yeah, how would you take out gear then if it's a simulation, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. We did uh, an episode on Battlefield 2042 when it um, came out, and <laughs> this is just how, how excited people are for not playing Tarkov, is that people thought, God, I forget the name of the mode in Battlefield 2042, but, like, they used some language that made it vaguely sound like an extract extraction shooter. And it's not at all. It was never anywhere close to that. But, like, people are just jumping on anything that, that sounds like it could be. Hello. So It could be the case with Marathon. Hazard Zone. Hello? Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. Didn't they shut Friends? it down? <laughs> I think, I, I feel like I saw an announcement that they were just closing it off because it was dividing the player base too much. <laughs> Man, that's too bad. That man, I feel like that leaves a huge if, gap with the cycle. If anybody's cycles. around, um, I can give you a gift. I have a gift for you. So, what happened with this game? I am planning on doing a separate deep dive video for it with some notes. I'd love to hear any insight you have, Prince. I'm saying, Prince. I'm I'm sure that's a. You could talk about it for hours as well. What went wrong? But um, everyone from Reddit to Discord has a lot of opinions with what happened. Shocker. But one consistent thing that just keeps coming up is cheaters. I remember playing this game in closed beta and running into a cheater. And that's wild for a closed beta. Like someone developed whatever, you know, I don't I don't know what it takes to develop a cheat, but someone did it in a closed beta. It was a popular game and any game that gets popular, it, it'll happen. But I, I was shocked that it happened then. It, extraction shooters are, are good targets normally because like you cheat in a battle royale. It's like, okay, great. I won that ep that game of Warzone. And it added to my stats, I suppose. But you cheat an extraction shooter, and it helps many future games, right? It's it's adding value onto your account, which can be sold. That happens all the time in Tarkov. And finally, the biggest thing that makes it enticing to cheaters, I guess, is that it's free to play. They'll ban you, and they did ban a whole bunch of people, but you can just sign up for another account free, you know? Tarkov costs like 40 bucks a pop, and they notoriously have a hacker problem, so even that isn't a huge deterrent, I guess. Um, I remember hearing people complain about it originally, I think in the beginning of season one, and I'm like, I don't know, I guess there's cheaters, it just never affected me, until like, I, I, there was one incident that stands out to me, because it was just so disheartening of me. Uh, I was my first time playing on the second map, um, and uh, Crescent Falls, and I was waiting out a storm just in a little cubby. No way, it was pitch black, no way anyone could have seen me and I got headshot from across the map. I searched his name in the Discord afterwards, and lots of people were mentioning that he killed them. Uh, that person was killing them too. And I don't know, you put so much time and investment into your account, you feel like I went in with a good kit. It it just is so deflating. It made me quit the, I think it was closed beta two that I was in when it happened. And that incident was probably why I started dropping off on season one as well. Jaeger, the developer, was very public about their war on cheaters and arguably made a whole bunch of headway in season two. And I, there was a period where I didn't play very much. I understood there was m way more progress made when season three launched. Um, but when the game was like popular and everyone was watching it in season one, it was like just a constant plague on the conversation, turning people off the game. Like imagine having, imagine having a streamer play your game to 30,000 people watching it and an invisible hacker sta starts taunting them, right? It's not a it's not a good look, and that happened multiple times. Guess it had again. such a low. Oh, you found the howler again? Don't you do it? Don't you do it, Bob? You find friends. You don't fight that howler. He's not for you. Oh, you got the manticore this time, <laughs> though. Oh man, that thing has some kick. All right, Saiyan Prince had uh, said that it had such a low player count two months after it launched. They stopped tracking the actual player count. And uh, season one was a nightmare for cheaters. Season two, this is from Sloth though. Season one was a nightmare for cheaters. Season two was good. They put a lot of effort into getting rid of them. Howler is friend. Howler could be friend, but he already took a shot. <laughs> hey Howler, what animal looks kind of like a bandit? <laughs> cheaters hurt the player no, count. Attitude. 
but in the end isn't why Jaeger chose to close the game. Yeah, cheaters can't be the reason that they chose to, to close it. It's got to be, like, the effect that cheaters had, maybe. This is the third version. Is it the third version of the game? So, like, there was a version before the cycle? I haven't even mentioned that in this podcast yet. There are too many flaws they literally can't fix now. Yeah, it'd be easier from the start a new game than fix the ones they have. There's more to say about what the people didn't like. The time to kill, like people were, I guess in, in any game, people are complaining like this game's on, or this gun's on balance, blah, blah, blah. Um, the time to kill is something that always seemed to come up. Uh, it's a lot longer than like Tarkov or uh, maybe comparable to Call of Duty. Just how many bullets you have to put into per someone and like how much longer should you last if you have the top tier armor in the game. Um, it was just a constant conversation happening in the Discord, which I guess is fine. It's going to be something that happens, and there were lots of adjustments that happened um, over the uh, over the life of the game. AI, I think, for someone who has 6,000 hours in the game, like, uh, say, in Prince and our chat has, I'm sure they know how to manipulate the AI to where they basically don't exist. <laughs> uh, it feels a little bit goofy once you get used to it, Ow. like how to bait the movements out of them, and you can kill, like, the toughest... Um, the marauders um with uh with just knowing how to manipulate the environment it's i don't know i guess that's just part of the gameplay and maybe that was never supposed to be the focus but also people complain of the shallowness of the quest system there's not enough end game mostly it's that if people weren't turned off by cheaters people who came to play the game like a lot like a job seemed to get bored with it my biggest thing after revisiting this game for this episode is like it doesn't appear that vastly different than it did in the closed betas i can i can like i spot a bunch of things name a bunch of things that are different but the gameplay needed to grow really quickly and it it seems like it just didn't do that quick enough to hold attention one more thing about the slow decline that it saw like many people saw the writing on the wall when they announced a, a big change in season three I think they needed a big shakeup because obviously internally or revenue wise, things weren't going well. They announced for season three that they were ending seasonal wipes. Your character would no longer reset unless you wanted to. You could do a manual reset and get, I guess, some unlockables for doing that, which I guess would make that more comparable to um, Hunt Showdown. I don't know. To me, I thought this was mind blowing. Like you can look at the Steam charts and see the huge spike in, in player base on each reset. Um, you know, to be fair, the season when they announced that that was going to be the case had the biggest spike yet. So you could say that like, well, when they announced that there weren't going to be any more wipes, lots of people were interested in playing the game again. But <laughs> okay, that happens and the, the player base starts to drop off. But there's nothing in the foreseeable future aside from just normal updates that are going to bring more players in. And I, I don't know that it just wasn't happening. So regular and reliable content could have done it like we're seeing with Hunt Showdown, but it wasn't coming fast enough for whatever development reasons. I watched a video of someone point out, it is interesting, like, uh -oh. why keep the servers up for so long? They announced this in June, and they're closing the servers in September. Like, uh, German laws? Oh, thank thank you for having an answer. Yeah, I watched, I watched a YouTube video of someone bringing that up. I'm like, yeah, that is weird. All right, so German laws to, they can't shut down a pay service. Interesting. So, yeah, because I saw some people complaining, like, uh, well, I just bought the, you know, the pack in season two you're not really losing that much i get you're upset that the game is shutting down but yeah it's not like you're being ripped off that bad <laughs> by my math correct me if i'm wrong chat but i think it was about 12 bucks of um u.s currency for the battle pass um in the translation i think that i saw before the discounts like uh, i can't see it now because they've taken the the orum payments offline but it's 5,000 000 orum is like 50 bucks right so it's you know cents 5,000 cents so the DLC is interesting. I'll show some. They were pretty high. It would range. They had a DLC pack that went up to like $100. In season three, there were three DLC packs that ranged from $75 to $100. And I guess that is a reason to kind of be upset if you bought the season three DLC packs. March of 2023 was season three um, launch. So the new DLC that came out for that, yeah, if you spent the $129 on it, um, that'd be pretty wild to to have the game shut down within, uh, that'd be six months after they bought it. Maybe that's where the German law comes in. <laughs> Slotho says they would have bought a lot more, but the price always puts you off. Yeah, that's the only way I ever acquired. And that feels weird too. For a game that I loved so much, I'll get you guys input on like the giving revenue to this game. So it's a, I, I really did like this game. I, like I said, I didn't spend an absolute ton of time in it, but it's a free to play game. And because I was a partner, I ended up getting the um, DLC pack. But if I'm thinking about it in any other way, I might have spent some money on Orem once, 
but yeah, it feels weird for a game that I liked. I never actually gave them money, right? And I feel like I would have. Uh, I don't know. I, I've, I'm having a crisis of faith at the moment. <laughs> like, is it my fault? Was I the problem? <laughs> uh, Healy Wheelie said what really killed this game was the free Aurum generator that you could upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was part of the hideout. And I think it's a clever idea. You can generate the premium currency in this game if you play enough. So you can buy the battle cap, buy the battle pass by playing the game enough, right? Yeah, Slotho says they spent 100 euro from the start. Healy Wheel is I grinded enough Orm for my generator to get the battle pass without paying anything. Yeah. Boy, it really feels like they dug themselves a hole. <laughs> I, um, I'm i a big believer in, like, if you're enjoying a game like this, I, I'd i happily spend, like, what, 10 bucks a month or something like that? Is it going to help defeat, like, cheaters and make the game experience better? I'd be happy to do that. I don't, I don't know how much that's going to hurt the player count, because you need a big player count for a game like this, but... It's really odd that like they're yeah, but that might take out the player count. Maybe add like a yeah. premium service or yeah, I don't know, something else for those players. But yeah, I feel like they make it, you know. Yeah, I saw uh, the like, you know, cut it back a little bit. The I saw the hundred twenty nine dollar um DLC pack, and I at first I thought that was absurd, but then I realized like you know there's people out there with more money than they know what to do with. If the developers want to sell uh, some ridiculously priced cosmetic, and it, it does give them a little bit of an advantage. Um, it's like getting some of those, um, boxes that you guys opened. Um, you know, you get some more gear that, that does help you out. I was saying if they want to make money off someone with more money than they know what to do with, fine. But it seems like looking at their DLC is like, were you banking on all of that? They also just sold the premium currency too. You could just buy that straight out. I don't, I don't know how many people would do that though. I never saw enough of a reason to do that. They had some really cool cosmetics, but Sotho said I'd end up spending way more if it didn't feel like a ripoff for things. Yeah. And everything's priced really high, right? I was, I was looking at the cosmetic store right now and everything's like 95% off. So you have enough money to buy everything but then i was looking at the original price of it and was like wait is that like 20 dollars for that skin like who's gonna do that <laughs> da, da, da. man i got real lucky finding at first people. yeah and then it's been yeah steam database shows how many players are playing a game like most played right now counter-strike global offensive they got three quarters of a million people playing it and dota has like a quarter million people playing it going down to something around where they are where was it the games that were above and below the cycle were Fall Guys. Fall Guys has comparable numbers to the cycle right now. That seems crazy to me. Like, I mean, are they going to cancel Fall Guys? I mean, they might have a better revenue model. I don't know. But the original EverQuest game that's on Steam, a game that came out in 1999 and I sunk hundreds of hours into, that has just as much players as uh, the cycle. I don't know. It's just, it's weird trying to understand, like, there's so many people playing this game and it's, it's not feasible to keep it online. So for every GGN episode, the point of these points is that they're competing for a prize. And uh, usually I 3D print something that's interesting. Someone, some rogue developer maybe from Jaeger, has has the models from uh, the cycle and they uploaded the stim packs as well as the health packs. So I printed a little 3D model of the health pack. I'm gonna, is, is gonna that paint this? that up real nice. Yeah, it's a uh, exact 3D model of the health kits in this game. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that cool? I thought that came out pretty nice. Bob, this is your first experience with the game. I want, I want to hear what you're thinking. What do you think yeah, about the cycle? Today's my first day ever. I, I downloaded it last night. Um, I didn't play it. I just played it when I got home from work today. And I uh, played probably for, what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes before the podcast started. Yeah. But, you know, I definitely a learning curve. Because uh, I've never played one of these games, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like it. Have you extracted yet? Except, well, in a body bag you have, but have you extracted on a ship? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've, I've left a ship. Oh, you did? Okay. Back, got ammo and stuff like that. Nice. But, I mean, usually I die. That's why I'm running out of uh, decent guns. So just grab whatever I got. I, I, I will say, like, games like even PUBG or, like, those Battle Royale games, I never like the uh, anxiety it gives you of, like, looking for somebody. Sure. And, like, this is... You know, this is like an extra level. Of, <laughs> it is. It's it's that ramped up for sure. You know, you, you, you hear someone, you're like, oh, is that someone? It's like, no, no, no. Or like yeah. you know, AI things creep up on you sometimes. There's a gravel sound in this game where you'll yeah. sometimes step on like a, a stony surface and it sounds like gravel falling. It has the most anxiety. And it, 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 you sound like, no, there was definitely a footstep over there and you hide out in a bush for like five minutes and you're like, am I crazy? Uh -huh. <laughs> but also one of the problems with extraction shooters like this is your hearing is just as important as your, your vision. And you have to crank your volume up so high because you want to hear 
the uh, the footsteps as soon as you can. But that also means that you just you get a jump scare every time a gunshot goes off near you. I have so many clips of me streaming this game and just me almost like losing control of my mouse when someone starts shooting at me, and then I have to find it again to, to point at them. And definitely, I've been scared a few times with like the little bastards. I don't know their names, but the little striders, red guys yeah. kill striders. Yeah, but like I'm doing something and I hear something. Like, what the hell is that? Look around. And it just <laughs> pops up out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? It's it's been a much different experience playing with the intent of making finding friends <laughs> other people you know because yeah. no, no, normally i'm in it, or at least in this game i've in no. fear of other people right so i'm spending most of my time running oh god running the other way from gunshots <laughs> sure and now it's it, it's it's kind of a fun um some of my favorite gaming experiences i've had have been in games with proximity chat yeah I was a kid and I was thinking about video games of like the future. Like that's that's pretty close to it, man. We're like to experience what it would actually be like to be there, you know, and yeah. to hear people that are only like around you. And it's not just like everybody in one big room kind of yelling at each other, you know, right. Like it lends itself to some like really cool moments where you're able to talk to people. Even, and when you went out, when you first introduced it to me, we yeah. were able to, uh, it was a time where I was getting a little more confident and there was this guy I shot oh, at the, and I kind of had the role tower, reversal yeah. where he was like, no, 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 please, please, please. Like, <laughs> and it, it was like that weird, it was, I don't know, it was a weird feeling I've never had in a game before where I was like, okay, you go. Like that first guy <laughs> we're playing with today, yeah. I was like, it would be morally wrong. <laughs> like it felt, yeah. It felt like... <laughs> yeah, like like you were saying, like some of the most memorable moments um, you have with Proxy Chat and yeah, like... I think about other games that I've spent a lot of time in, even a game like uh, like Warzone or Call of Duty, something like that. Like maybe I can remember like one or two incidents of, of me winning or something like that, these kinds of matchups. But otherwise, like I've had a lot of time that I just don't remember. But with a game like The Cycle, like I remember so many encounters that I've had that like were really tense. I barely made it out of another live. Um, I managed to take out two or three people, you know, the the size of the backpack that I got out. I, or I killed this guy who had gear I'd never seen before, that kind of stuff. It just lends itself so much better to, like, memorable storytelling, you know? Um, and that's why these games do so well. Uh, I remember getting crushed by ships multiple times. Um, <laughs> uh, but has that, has that happened? Have you oh, yeah, 100%. Like... Yeah. <laughs> The first you learn the first time, and then it might happen again accidentally, which definitely happened to me. By the drop pods or different ships? Uh, by the extract ship when you get. Oh, um, um, if you like yeah. wait there, he'll like land right on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, gotcha. For GGN the podcast, we always rate our games a little something we call the garbage scale. Um, so games can be perfect, like uh, oh, I don't know, Ocarina of Time. This is gonna be a perfect ten, right? There's also games that do a little worse and they're going to get down to zero, but we have a scale that goes all the way to negative 10. What that shows is that you're getting enjoyment out of again, but it's for all the wrong reasons. So for a game like this, I think well, a good chance it's all going to be on the positive side. This isn't a, a game that's so bad it's good, but we'll still give it a Garbage Valley score. So what do you guys think? Where does this fall on the Garbage Valley score system? I agree with you. I think it is a good game. And it sounds like, for the most part, like all the complaints come from like people spoiling it, you know, <laughs> which is, which is sad. But I, I think my experiences with it, I haven't, at least I didn't think I ran into any um, cheaters. Things. Proximity chat lends itself to some pretty cool stuff, and um, like that tension, like you said, uh, storytelling moments. Like proximity chat gives you like a chance to interact with people that's a lot different than a, a lot of other games uh, to, to uh to even that first one the way i have with that guy like that's it's just weird to be able to like meet someone seemingly on an alien planet and you're just like well, hey we'll be buddies like that's, yeah. and you could shoot each other at any time like it's or weird... stab in the back, you know? <laughs> yeah, stab in the back. um yeah I, uh, yeah, I'm still proud of that. Man, I stabbed that guy and shot him quick. You did. Um, it was, it was fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he couldn't talk. He couldn't talk. I feel like that was a good, a good enough reason wow. that we, we couldn't communicate. That Put him out of his really misery. Awful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's good enough reason to kill someone. <laughs> yeah. Now that I say it, I'm like, no, that's. 
that's not right that's that's <laughs> not how i'm supposed to say it yeah i i thought it was i thought it was a, a, a good game uh, and i i think i'd be remiss in giving it any lower than like a 7.5 7.5 uh, all right real yeah. quick while it's, while it's on my mind uh, there is they mentioned in chat that so I'll get into it in the deep dive, but this game apparently has gone through three iterations. The first one seemed like it was a very small internal thing, I guess, uh, or the it's called the Prospector. I have to follow up on it. The second version did have a full launch on Epic Game Store, and it was called just The Cycle. And this was a more PvP VE experience, but it was a lot more like a battle royale. Um, it was not a big open map that was a looter shooter like this. Um, because it had limited success, they took it down and just completely reworked it into what you're seeing now. Oh, it was called Storm Chasers, that's right. Yeah, this is in its third iteration now, and say in Prince, you were saying that you don't think they're going to reuse the assets for another version. What I was getting at with that, though, is that, like, it is really impressive that uh, to create a game like this with a loot pool with enemies and to, to launch it like this. It's a lot in a game, even if it's not as much as other games like Tarkov that takes a really long time to get there. But they were able to do it because they were building from kind of an already developed game. They were repurposing something to get here. What kind of shocks me is that like the transformation that it went from Cycle Storm Chasers to the Cycle Frontier just seems to me like so vast. It's such a different game than what it was. Um, and I'll have some video gameplay of it, of what it was. It, it just seems so, so different. And yet in the entire time the game has been live, it just seems like development almost stalled. And maybe it's because they were fighting cheaters the whole time. But even looking back at the Storm Chasers version, like they have like uh, little humanoid like bots and a lot more creatures too. So it, it seems like they have the assets there. Um, oh man, I've had a couple good fights hiding out on this rooftop. So I was saying like they had the assets and it just, it stands out to me as odd that they didn't incorporate more of it. Something that I always thought would have worked well was they have these humanoid robots that are armed already from their assets. Why don't they just like kind of put them all over the map? And that would really mix up some of the gameplay feel. And you could even do it as like an event, like today there's robots uh on the map and they are all armed with scrappers or whatever but that way at least when you heard gunshots you'd be like i don't know what it is should i get engaged with it you know as it is right now you hear a gunshot on the map you're like it's a player a cobots yeah that's what they were called they can't add anything because when they do it'll break 20 things yeah is that the case oh and you're saying that the assets are amazing it's the code behind it that sucks that's fascinating because it feels like they they did some amazing stuff to get it here is it your opinion then that like they have broken too many things with it going from three through three different versions. I was going to say that um, you're under NDA, but uh, did you do some of the, uh, what's it called, the test servers as well? Was there a lot of stuff that happened in there that they should have started over with Frontier and waited another year? Yeah, I just built it from the ground up. What could have been? What could have been? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. You're saying that it would have broken a lot of things, you tested a lot of things and didn't make it interesting. Interesting. Lots of bugs and errors and every fucking thing they added, yeah. Bob, obviously you have a less experience with it. We hoped that Frank could be here. Frank played this game with me uh, a handful of times, and he actually, uh, sorry, before I get on to you, Bob, Frank was very excited at the prospect of no more wipes for this game. He thought it would make him play it a lot more. Spoiler, it didn't, but uh, he, he felt that way about them announcing it. Yeah, because he, he didn't like the idea of investing time you, into a season to have it wiped. You, me, and Frank all... Um played together a little bit actually yeah and i think hunter might have jumped in a couple games too and i think that was during my 24-hour stream yeah bob so what do you think you have a some brief experience with it but where would you put it on the scale all right so yeah i'm not uh you know too experienced with the game to get my first time playing it uh first impressions i I also like also these games aren't really my thing again i'm I'm with frank we're you know working towards something and have it just wiped (laughs) kind of sucks i'm like oh what's the point of like putting all this time in if it's gonna just lose it yeah. That's why I also don't like games like, you know, League of Legends or even like, I don't know, something like, in other words, like, oh, like the whole match is like building your stuff. And at the end, you just lose it all. It's like, oh, so why do I? Oh, so, I'm okay, I got you. Game. You're more into the an RPG that stays. You don't like the yeah, idea of an R- mean, resetting I mean, RPG. I, I've had a love affair with uh, World of Warcraft for the past, I don't know, sure. like 12 years. Sure. So, you know, I, I, it goes because calls me back when I play games. Like, yeah, I'm just go back to see what's going yeah, on Just there. test it out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's where I'm at with it. Um, but also, I do, it does feel good i mean i know it's towards the end now so it's already kind of established i'm sure there are some more buggy stuff that i'm not messing with yeah um but I, i'd give it i mean it's definitely a good game 
I kind of hate to see it go because it see, feels fun and I can see how people enjoy this. Yeah. But just because my not my kind of go to game that I'm not going to play a lot, uh, I'm going to give it a solid 6.5. 6.5. All right. Um, yeah, for me, I. I really did love this game. I watched a ton of games like Tarkov, these in-depth games that I knew I'd never be able to get into. And then this game came around and it was, I felt like it was perfect for me. Yeah, it was just the perfect kind of casual version of that. I didn't like I was saying, I don't think I'm even that good at it, but the interactions are great. I love the tension, gets your heart racing, the journeys that, that I created and remember. Like I, like I was saying, I have so many memories of different gunfights and getting out with gear that I that I hadn't had before. Um, I couldn't tell you like any memories from like I've played a lot of Apex, but like I, I can barely tell you about any of the games that I've had in that. But yeah, this game was really something special for me. So yeah, I'm gonna give it uh, I'd give it a nine honestly. Even though like I didn't come back to it and play it that much, it was I was disheartened because of the cheaters. But the game itself, I, I really enjoyed. So yeah, I'll go nine. Oh look at that! It looks like Pride Rock. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, it's really offensive what you just said, Tom. Can't believe you say that on. (laughs) My bad, my bad. Saiyan Prince says, uh, (laughs) if uh, if he could rate it on what it could have been, he would give it a ten. What it ended up being, six is fair. There's so much good to ignore. Necessarily like backstabby, where it'd be like, oh no, 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 player, player. Oh, Oh. (laughs) I (laughs) saw this. You won't believe it. I saw this moron standing under Pride Rock, (laughs) sky free. I was like really that red run, geared I, out of his mind. <laughs> I made a point to like just shoot a lot and I was hoping to draw someone oh, I'm covering in, it up. Sorry, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was playing it, I played it for a little stretch in season two and it seemed like um, it was I just kept running into guys like Saiyan Prince here who like <laughs> every single person I ran into the people it felt like the people who were left playing. And there's lots of things that go into the matchmaking about your gear level, about uh, your your kill death ratio for a while was considered, I guess. And like I was saying, the well, it matches you with solos if uh, versus solos if you're solo, where it'll match you with the size of your squad. And what was the other thing I was going to say? There's another. Oh, the trusted and untrusted. So there's like all these factors that are splitting up the how many people are playing, which I guess can make the server lobbies feel kind of empty sometimes. But anyway, the the way that I was playing. What I kept felt like I kept running into the same people. I was playing. I played for like six hours one night. I remember, and game after game, I kept running into the same people. Like we'd met, we'd meet up, be friends, and then like, oh, let's team up and get these people. And I'd look at the names and like, oh, we killed this guy. And then the next game I got into was like, wait, I teamed up with this guy, and you wouldn't even know until afterwards. And you're looking at the prox, uh, the proximity chat and stuff. But it just seemed like it was a really small pool of people, um, and that was that was kind of surprising. But I don't know. They, they, they divided up a whole bunch. Um, through all those things and that definitely makes it less fun (laughs) those are our scores for the cycle frontier i'll have a deeper dive video into the game um i appreciate uh last saiyan prince slotho eely wheelies and a bunch more people you rated me with i really appreciate that um and especially your insight into the game for someone who has quite a few more hours than me into it we're sad to see the cycle go but I am happy to give Tom a prize. Congratulations, Tom. You've earned yourself a health kit. There you Huzzah! go. <laughs> yeah, I hope that you can live with yourself, Tom, making a friend and stabbing them in the back. Yeah, I I really emotionally struggled with that first one. <laughs> he just kept like, showing his back to you, too. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he there, were kept co- around. <laughs> there were a couple moments in there where, like, just... I wonder what that looked like on your end, just, like, having the knife and holding it while looking at his back. <laughs> I felt pretty dirty. Oh, that's the gear. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more thing we have to do. Tom, are you all geared up? Are you ready for the fashion show? Where is it? We're looking for Last Saiyan Prince. He's on the wall, he says. In the middle. LSP in the middle. What is LSP? Oh, LSP. There it is. Yeah. Oh, LSP. Oh, oh, I was looking for... Oh, Last Saiyan Prince. Oh, okay. Yeah, Last Saiyan Prince. Awesome. 5,000 plus it for 5,000 hours. Oh, wow, that's crazy. There he is. We have the legend wow, in our chat right really now. that's really cool. That's really cool. <laughs> All right, time for the fashion show. Let's see it, Tom. You can pull up your character screen. Might be the best way to see it. Ooh, all right. Kind of like a marauder feel, like you're in the desert, the wastelands, maybe? What I I was feeling Mm -hmm. like was like it was a completely human body, uh, you know, trying to make friends and then got his head blown off, but there was enough left to give him a robot head. (laughs) 
What you don't know about the human body is if don't need the head necessarily. You just That's need right. the rest. <laughs> the only part of the brain that was left was the part that seeks friendship. Okay, I like it. I like the backstory. There's also some weird. Uh, there's some weird lore in the backstory of this game. Like behind you, and your character says, "Foam doesn't work. They're clones," which is pretty fucking cool. I like that actually. <laughs> oh, that is that is a cool idea. So like, if you die down there, you're dead basically. basically. Yeah. Ah, what do we? That got actually really down? scares me about. Sorry, real quick, just about the idea of teleportation. Yeah. That I would be like, no, I will like you're not that we're ever gonna, to gonna be, yeah. never get there. But just that idea of it being like, yeah, it would be another Tom, man. It wouldn't yeah. be me. Some other guy. Getting deep here. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, Bob. You got any backstory here? It was just we got a badass. I do like not. It. I just bought a pre-made thing. Oh, it's that, pre-made. Uh, Entirely pre-made. The Coral of Pal- Paladin. It's all pre-made. <laughs> in this podcast were used in compliance with a U.S. copyright fair use exemption for criticism and commentary. Garbage Game Night makes no claims to ownership over any games played and has no affiliation with any developer or publishing company. For additional references on cited articles and quotes, check our episode-related blog at garbagegamenight.com.